Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of Cornell and Deal Small Batch Father the Flame Straight Up English. That's a mouthful. This is the next tobacco, which I will be reviewing on the Stuff and Things channel. I will post this. Now, wait a minute. I've got several videos coming up, so I can't tell you exactly which day this is going to post. I usually try to post the videos on at 3 o'clock. Um, it will be coming up during the week at some point. We're reviewing this because we've been very Virginia Blend heavy lately, and this is just something that I've had my eye on. It's been on my wish list for a while on smoking pipes, so I thought I would give it a try, change things up a little bit. It's an interesting blend. Check out the video review for that. Some of the other things that we will be reviewing on the channel. I was sent another Nintendo Switch case. This one by Kutek. Uh, they sent this to me to review and I have been using it lately. Uh, it was a good thing they sent it to me too and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. But uh, you can see here, fits the Switch nice and snugly inside. It's got two little inserts hinged where you can put game cards. I've only got a couple actual physical games. Almost everything else I have is digital. And then it has this nice little zipper pocket here where I've got uh, my Joy-Con straps, my earbuds and things like that. So I will be reviewing this on the channel coming up this week. And then I also got a uh, new to me pipe. It's been a while since I've uh, procured a new pipe and it was one it's a style and a series that I've had my eye on for a long time, and I've just been looking for the right pipe at the right price, and I think I finally found it. So I'll be showing you a video of that, uh, receiving the box, checking it out. I got it on eBay. The pictures were a little bit blurry. It was kind of difficult to tell exactly what condition it was in, exactly how much uh, I trusted the description or not. So I took a plunge, and uh, should I spoil it? I don't know. Watch the video, you'll find out. You'll see how the pipe ended up being. Um, so those videos, I think all three of those videos will be posting this week, maybe just two. We'll have to see how far I get this weekend. It is a long weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend in the US of A. Um, so hopefully most of you are getting Monday off. I do have Monday off, so maybe I can work on more of this stuff. We shall see. I've got things written down. Well, let's talk about Father of the Flame a little bit. I don't want to spoil the review necessarily, but let's light it up again. This has been recommended by several different people and it was something that I had my eye on. I think I saw, God, it might have, must have been over a year ago, I saw a review on smoking pipes, I believe, about this blend. And so I think it was even back then that I put it on my list. My list is very long, so it takes a long time to get through it. But uh, I've been smoking this for about a week and a half now. And without giving too much away, I would say it's a little more mild than most English blends, or at least most blends that have Latakia in there. And even though, well, it's a little bit more mild and it seems very pure to me, like very nice, honest tobacco flavor. So I think it's something that you should be interested in watching and it is a good change up from some of the Virginia heavy uh, reviews that we've been doing lately. A little bit other business, a little bit of other business here. Well, of course, Stuff and Things Plays is continuing. Um, my second channel on which I post gameplay videos and the Zelda Breath of the Wild series is still, I don't know when that is ever going to end. Um, it's a huge game and I'm really enjoying playing it. So I don't, I kind of don't want it to end. I guess I could just zip through and just finish the game if I felt like it, but I'm trying to suck all the marrow out of this bone and uh, it's good. You should check it out on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. There are going to be some other series going on on that channel as well, so stick around for that. One thing I wanted to mention, we've been talking, I guess the last two Sunday Smokes about, I guess it was sort of just based on weird English grammar things, and then it sort of morphed into pet peeves that you might have with the way people speak or spell, um, maybe speaking or spelling incorrectly as far as English rules and grammar go. And then a lot of people have put things in comments, some of their own pet peeves. One thing that I had forgot to mention that really, really annoys me is the word familiar. F-A-M-I-L-I-A-R, familiar. When I say it quickly in conversation, I will say familiar, familiar. 
It's familiar. I am familiar with that. But so many people throw an R in there. They sneak an R into that word. There's no R except at the very end. They will say familiar. I hear that all the time. Or they'll say familiar. 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 It's familiar. All right. So that was one little pet peeve that I just had to mention. And now I think it's time to talk about a tale of great sadness and woe. Now, I don't know if I can set this up. Let me see here. I have, well, I just happen to have it right here. I have a satchel. I guess it's a messenger bag. This is made by Timbuktu, fairly well known in the field of messenger bags. And I bring this to work with me filled with a lot of crap that I need throughout the day. Well, I don't necessarily need it, but it's filled with a lot of crap. I usually have, ugh, I have a water bottle in there, like so. I have my coffee mug, the sealable coffee mug, like this. I have uh, usually my pipe roll, like so. Some tobacco, Elizabethan, often. Uh, I usually have my wallet. I'll have my Leatherman Charge multi-tool. I might have a handgun in there. This is a Glock 43 just various things that I bring with me to work. It usually sits in my uh, truck throughout the day. Now, I think I talked about this coffee mug before on the show. Um, it is a great clean canteen thermos mug. Keeps your coffee nice and hot, keeps your cool drinks nice and cool, and it has this great sealable lid. You click that, that's open. You click that, it's closed. Nothing leaks out whatsoever. It's great, you can just throw it in the bag. Hey, it's fine, no worries. Oh, and I also carry my uh, Nintendo Switch in my beautiful Waterfield case. Um, the problem is that you have to remember to close the lid. And the other day, after a very long, exhausting, and it's been very hot lately, very hot, sweaty, just nasty day, I was totally exhausted. I just wanted to go home and relax. And at the end of the day, I had had maybe a third of the coffee in my mug. And as I drove home, just wanting to relax, I knew, I knew I needed to probably answer some comments, get some videos ready to post and things like that. But I wanted to unwind a little bit before I worked out. And I, <laughs> I was in my vehicle. I think I was still sipping on my coffee, threw everything in my bag and then threw my coffee mug into the bag. And then I threw the bag over my shoulder, was tromping around, coming up to my apartment. Um, usually in my little routine, when I get into the door, I have my lunch uh, cooler thing. I'll take that and this is strapped around my back. So I come inside, I kinda, I'll take off my hat, hang up my uh, sweatshirt, take off my shoes. I take my lunch cooler, I empty it out, I wash any utensil that I might have used there. I tidy all that up and this thing is still just kind of hanging, banging around on my back. And then finally I come into my, uh, my bedroom and I put this down by my desk and then I open this and I start taking everything out. And as I open this, I took out the coffee mug like this and was splattered with coffee. I mean, what the hell? And then I looked inside my bag and there was a lake of coffee inside. Now this thing you can see here, it's, it's got this waterproof liner, which is great from keeping things out, but it also keeps things in. And basically every drop of this coffee, which is probably like, God, I'd say 16 to 18 ounces of coffee poured out into my bag. And I showed you all the things that were in my bag. So, <laughs> My beautiful Waterfield switch case was completely soaked in coffee. Uh, my switch inside, luckily, it didn't seem to like soak into the switch. It just got some on the surface. Um, my nice Glock 43 handgun was completely soaked with coffee. I took the magazine out, coffee poured out, coffee poured out of the mag well. There was just coffee everywhere. Um, I took out my lovely new Popov Chrome XL leather wallet, completely soaked. All my cards, all my money, completely soaked with coffee. My tin of Elizabethan was perfectly safe 
not soaked. I mean, it was soaked on the outside, but it was safe on the inside. My wonderful leather pipe roll was completely soaked. Um, the pipe cleaners, the tools, everything inside, my lighter. It was, it was a disaster. It was a travesty, and this was just completely soaked. Oh, and yeah, my Leatherman multi-tool. It's stainless steel, but it still, it still can rust, and it was soaked in coffee, sugary coffee with milk. So I'm sitting there. I'm so exhausted. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I'm not in a good mood, and it was a good two and a half hours of cleaning all this shit up. I had to basically, the leather, all the leather things that I had were so soaked in coffee, and you're not supposed to just like, you know, hose off leather, but I had to carefully like clean everything, wipe everything out. The, the switch case, especially, it's just filled. It's still damp now, which is why I don't have my switch in it. But you know, I've got these leather accents here. I've got leather outside here. You can still maybe see sort of the water stain that ended up being on there. Cause I had to basically, I had to just run this under the faucet and clean it all out. Cause it's filled with this really plush thick lining and it was just impossible to spot clean it because it was just soaked completely with coffee. I had to just soak this, scrub it, and then I had to very carefully and slowly let it dry out. That's a tip for you. If you get your leather, fine leather, soaking wet, you can save it, but you have to be careful not to put it next to a heat source. Don't let it dry too quickly or else it can crack. This I had to sort of put aside. I put it on a flat towel, slowly drying it, turning it, drying it, not using anything to dry it, just the ambient air. And then once this leather had dried, I took some um, leather conditioner the, and rubbed it in there to sort of replace some of the oils. I think it's going to be fine. It's still damp inside, but it should dry out eventually. My switch, I had to very carefully wipe everything down. I had like Q-tips going into everything, um, trying to use some alcohol and some other things to clean everything up. This thing, my gun, I had to completely disassemble, not just field strip, but completely disassemble everything, scrub everything out, dry everything off, re-oil everything. My Leatherman tool, I had to just run under the faucet and com completely clean, then completely dry, then oil everything to protect it. It was the most irritating thing in the entire world. Okay, first world problems, yes, saying that's the most irritating thing in the world. That's hyperbole, obviously. But at the end of a very long day, uh, it was annoying. And it was something that I didn't want to have to do. Not to mention the fact that it could have destroyed some very expensive uh, electronics and weapons and things. like oh, It couldn't destroy the Glock, I guess. But so all of this is to say, I am a pretty careful, pretty detail-oriented person. Um, you know, every time I get home, I have a little dish. I put my keys right there. I never lose my keys. I always know where my keys are. I always know where my wallet is. I'm very, you know, I, I dirty a dish, I clean it right away and I put it away. I'm pretty clean, pretty organized for the most part. But even someone like me, who might be considered slightly OCD or slightly anal, every once in a while, you might forget to close your coffee lid. And of course, that could be a metaphor for other things. So just, pay attention. It's always worthwhile to maybe just give that little extra check, uh, that little extra once over, because you will save yourself hours of obnoxious work and hassle. And that's what I'm trying to impart to you today. And by the way, that is the second time that has happened to me with all the same damage. Actually, I guess I didn't have my switch the first time that happened. But uh, yeah, maybe I should be a little bit more careful. So I'm gonna try to heed my own advice in my life and uh, just not take things for granted. Don't take it for granted that your coffee lid is closed. Um, it's been 14 minutes and 30 seconds since I started this Sunday smoke. It is super hot in the Stuff and Things studios. It's about 80 degrees here in the Pacific Northwest today, and I have to have all the windows closed when I'm recording, so all the ambient noise outside doesn't intrude on the Sunday smoke. So I'm about to melt. So I think I will cut off the Sunday smoke here, but please look forward to, and please watch all the things that I will be posting on the channel. At least two videos coming up this week, maybe three. Um, so look forward to the review of Father of Flame, Father of Flame, Father the Flame, Cornell and Deal small batch. Look forward to the new pipe that I got. I will be showing that. Look forward to the review of the Kutek 
Nintendo Switch case, um, and then of course all the content that I'm constantly posting on Stuff and Things Plays. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience, this has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.